Penix to Davis. Right up the gut, and he is into the end zone, and the Huskies get on the board first. For the Huskies on their opening series. They're feeding the sophomore from Rancho Cucamonga, California. Will Nixon into the ball game now. The transfer from Nebraska on the left hip of Penix. Looking his way. Instead goes over the middle. This is Chamberlain Polk. He's got room and he tosses into the end zone. Somersault for the Husky touchdown. Penix quick drop. And now he's got his man Jalen McMillan is in space to the 40, 30. It's a foot race and he's going to win it. Touchdown, Jalen McMillan. And runs over to celebrate in front of the student section with his teammates. 84 yard ball. Playmakers involved, keeps his eyes down the middle of the field. And they motion that running back to the outside. He's creating an empty formation. Seam route by Jalen McMillan. And they love what he can. 100 yards. He's got three catches, 123, including the 84 yard strike. He's in motion right now. Handoff to Lapapa. And he plunges into the end zone. Four possessions and four touchdowns. This time is to Wayne Talapapa. Ball's on the left hash with three receivers to the right. Option look to Will Nixon, and he's going to walk into the end zone. Another look dialed up by the Husky offense, and it's a touchdown. Davis again, and he's into the end zone. Cam Davis with another touchdown. Penix to Davis, right up the gut, and he is into the end zone, and the Huskies get on the board first. For the Huskies on their opening series. They're feeding the sophomore from Rancho Cucamonga, California. Will Nixon into the ball game now, the transfer from Nebraska on the left hip of Penix. Looking his way, instead goes over the middle, this is Chamberlain Polk, he's got room. Somersault for the Husky touchdown. The next quick drop. And now he's got his man Jalen McMillan is in space to the 40, 30. It's a foot race and he's going to win it. Touchdown, Jalen McMillan. And runs over to celebrate in front of the student section with his teammates. 84 yard ball. Makers involved, keeps his eyes down the middle of the field, and they motion that running back to the outside. He's creating an empty formation, seam route by Jalen McMillan, and they love what he can. 100 yards, he's got three catches, 123, including the 84-yard strike. He's in motion right now. Handoff to Lapapa, and he plunges into the end zone. Four possessions and four touchdowns. This time is to Wayne Talapapa. Ball's on the left hash with three receivers to the right. Option look to Will Nixon, and he's going to walk into the end zone. Another look dialed up by the Husky offense, and it's a touchdown. Davis again, and he's into the end zone. Cam Davis with another touchdown. Penix to Davis, right up the gut, and he is into the end zone, and the Huskies get on the board first. 
for the Huskies on their opening series. They're feeding the sophomore from Rancho Cucamonga, California. Will Nixon into the ball game now. The transfer from Nebraska on the left hip of Phoenix. Looking his way. Instead goes over the middle. This is Chamberlain Polk. He's got room and he tosses into the end zone. Somersault for the Husky touchdown. I think you said that you hadn't seen much of Richard Newton, and uh, I was kind of surprised to see him suited up, and he looked like he played real well. Can you tell us a little bit about that progression to get Richard on the field, suited up and yeah. the uh, Rich made progress Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, um, gave him more reps every day, and, and uh, his body responded well, and, and they cleared him really just on Thursday, honestly, to get him in the game. So it was awesome to see him out there breaking some tackles. When you look at the way that he plays, uh, what jumps out to you in terms of his, his style and what he does well? Physical. He's, he's a physical runner. Um, I thought that's what, you know, one of the things we need is a guy that's going to break some tackles in, in open space, and I thought that was good for Rich to get out there and show that, you know, he can do that. You mentioned the Giles plays about his height, getting his first 100-yard game this past weekend. Just how have you seen his progression this season? Giles. You know, Giles has been... Um, Honestly, it's no surprise to me at all. I mean, he's been, honestly, since the first day of spring ball, he's, he's been like that. So I think the progression piece for him is continue to move him around in different spots. So this last week, saw him a little bit in H. Um, I think he had one rep at Z and then multiple times at X. So getting him more involved in different spots, I think, would be the next thing for him. What's uh, been the deal with Jackson Kirkland? Has he just not been quite healthy enough? Correct, correct. We're just, uh, you know... Following the medical advice and listening to those guys, I know Jackson is itching to get out there and, uh, again, making progress every day. And um, he had another good practice out there even yesterday and looked really good on the field. So just trying to make sure we don't have any setbacks. That's the biggest thing is you don't want to have a, you know, you come back one week too early and then you set him back for two or three weeks. That, that would not be optimal, obviously. So just trying to make sure we follow medical advice and push him as far as we can go. Not that far out of surgery, actually, for most people. Yeah, uh, correct, correct. So his status for Saturday is officially... Officially, we're planning on him playing. Okay. <laughs> we really are. We're going to keep trying to push it. Even this last week, he was in the plan. And um, same as Rich, you know, these guys, you just push it as far as you can. And then you listen to the doctors and the training staff as far as what they think. And... Um, at that point, you move on with the game plan. Does Fatuano strike you as an obvious better fit at tackle or guard, or is he really kind of built for? Uh, I, I mean, I think he can play both. You know, honestly, is I think Troy's only limitation at tackle is length. You know, athleticism, and power. He's not short on either one of those. Um, it really is just length, and I think you know I would always rather take a guy that has athletic ability over length at times where. He can move and, and stay attached to people and things like that. So Troy, I think, is truly one of the rare guys that can be, you know, not just good, but great at either one of those spots. Pettix had a couple of passes kind of sail on him a little bit in that game Saturday. What was what was going on there? Would you see any real difference in his game, the first game versus last Saturday? No. I mean, obviously, Mike would love to have that pick back. You know, that's one he tried to lift up over the wheel backer and, and uh, you know, try to get in there to JP. And other than that, I thought he, he played a really good game. You know, the ball wasn't in jeopardy, you know, other than the, the interception itself. But, um, you know, the first play, I know he was hanging on, waiting for uh, our three to clear and, and get loose and lift it over the top and just missed him on that one. But, uh, no, I thought he was – he had some some balls that he had to get rid of um, fairly quickly in, in some tight windows and, and did an even better job of that this week. So uh, I thought I thought he played really, really well. You know, it's, like I said, I, I think Mike was probably harder on himself than I was about the interception. You know, that was one in a clutch situation you'd have loved um, for us to complete that. But uh, I think it said a lot about him that, you know, we got the ball right back with limited time, and he came out and engineered a, you know, a field goal and orchestrated it really well. And 
um, complimented on that. Just that I tell the quarterback room, you know, how many football games you watch and how many times you see people fumble all over themselves in the, in the smallest mechanics and you see it every week. And um, it wasn't that big a deal, but the guys went down there efficiently, got down, spiked the football, got the field goal unit on, and got three points. I thought that was, you know, a great response to, you know, coming back from a bad play. Back. Are, are you still working through your, your running back rotation as far as how many carries Cam's going to get, how many carries Will's going to get, and those type of things? Yeah, this this week will be even more tricky. Um, you know, I thought the touches were pretty equal uh, this last week, and then the guys all had some pretty good opportunity. We really weren't going to put Rich in um, unless the game was in control, um, just because he hadn't had as many reps, um, probably wasn't totally in tune with the entire game plan. Um, so we we're hoping to get him reps, but we weren't guaranteed. But now this week with um, Sad Sam Adams back with us, and then also Rich, um, we'll have to be uh, pretty picky on who's getting in the game. And uh, made it really clear to the running backs, whoever has the best grasp of the game plan early on in the week, will have a good chance to get the ball. With Penix, the way that he's played these past two weeks, what what about him? What about his game makes you confident that this is you know the guy who leads you into a big non-conference matchup that you have on Saturday? He's he's still the same guy. You know, um, since day one, I think there's things that Mike's done a great job of improving on, but he shows up to work every day as the same guy, and, and, I, and I know he will. You know, meetings, um, it's, it's not going to phase him that he's going against Michigan State. You know, he's not going to downplay who they are and how good a football team they are, but at the same time, um, by no means will he be overwhelmed. And that, that's what gives, I think, all his teammates a lot of confidence as well. Do you take anything from his games against these guys? I mean, different staff, of course. Team. How much do you take from? Those oh, games? of course. I think there's there's plenty of quarterbacks all over the country that come out and play in games that they should clearly dominate. And and uh, I meant Michael's games against Michigan State. Oh, I, I was gonna say, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I think maybe leading back to the question prior is that. You know, he has been on those stages and he has played against those type of teams and, and played really well. Um, so I think there's there's some pieces there where, again, you know, not just the coaching staff, but even in his teammates where they look and they're like, oh, you know, Mike's been here. He's done that. And there's some confidence that, that I think brews from that for sure. After looking at the game film, you know, who are some of the guys that popped out and graded out really well? And you also were able to play a lot of guys. Those are some, maybe some guys that got their first chance, first opportunity to jump out. Um, guys that stood out, Mike played well again. Um, and then Corey Luciano, I thought, really took a step forward. You know, I, I didn't feel like we had great center play week one. And I thought week two, Corey had a lot of calls, a lot of different fronts. And, and the guys were definitely looking to him. And, and uh, he stepped up, had a really good week of practice. And... It wasn't a surprise when he went out there and played well, um, considering the type of week he had. So uh, that, that was really good to see. And then, uh, you know, I thought Jack Westover played pretty darn well. And then obviously Jalen and, and Giles uh, really had, had good games. And, you know, I thought Giles was the guy that stood out to me because he, he stepped up with Rome out and, and filled a lot of different roles, which, which helped the offense out. And as far as young guys or, or guys that came in in backup roles, um, the obvious guy was, was Rich. It was good to see him out there. You also got a little bit of uh, Sam out there. Uh, what did you see in his brief time, and, and what's the current situation in terms of the backup role? Well, um, we had had discussions leading into the game with Coach DeBoer and I just that if we got in a situation or were, you know, fortunate enough to get the game under control that, you know, getting Dylan more game reps was not a priority because Dylan's played a lot of football and Sam obviously hasn't. So if we got in a position where um, Dylan had already had a series or two, then we were going to get Sam in there just for mechanics. And that's the one thing you, you would have loved to see is that I would like to see Sam do a little bit better with a couple of those things. He, he had a couple of plays where he needed to get the offense lined up and um, failed to do that. We had one fumbled snap, you know, just some some things that got to get cleaned up, and, and I know Sam will keep working at that. What makes Jalen McMillan so effective? He's really fast. That's one thing. He's got good hands, too. But I think his, honestly, his change of direction in, in small amounts of space. He can get guys squared up and, 
and break away from him. And I think he's got pretty good instincts for a receiver. I mean, he understands spacing, how to get away from coverages and things like that. That's what, you know, he knows when to turn the gas on, when to bend a guy in, turn him back out. Um, I, I just I think he's got some really good natural instincts, and, and uh, I think he's getting better um, as, as we're going. Even yesterday in practice, some things that, you know, I know he was frustrated with as far as some of the – just the mechanics of lining up and getting things looking more clean in the first quarter because that was one of the things. We had a couple mishaps where, you know, we just didn't line up clean and fast enough. And, you know, most people probably didn't even notice on some of the plays, but our guys did, and, and I know they want that to be better. So, and Jalen's Jalen's part of that. Ryan, did you notice, did the smoke bother the kids at all? I mean, you were up in the booth, I assume, right? Saturday. Correct, so, correct. Did, did you notice anything, hear anything? You know, before the game, I asked the guys, even Mike, you know, because I was, Mike isn't used to playing in that. You know, if you're on the West Coast, there's probably a good chance you've played in a game with some type of smoke. And and Mike was like, yeah, I, I don't even really notice it. You know, so I I hadn't heard anything. There was nothing in the trainer's report or anything like that. So it seemed like it was okay. What do you see that, that Michigan State does really well defensively through their first two games? Um, you know, I think the the first thing is they, they play like a, a championship level team. They play hard. I know that's cliched, but they do. They run to the football. They strip the ball out. Their assignment sound. You're not going to get them to bust on base coverages and, and things like that. So those are the things that when you're playing a good defense like that, I think that stand out the most is just you're looking for the freebies and, and you're just not going to get many against a defense like that. They're um, they're a well-oiled machine. They executed at a really, really high level, and that's that's the main challenge. You know, for us, the last two weeks, we've been talking nothing about, you know, level of play, who they are. is just about us and our execution, and I think as long as we continue to focus on that and that we have to out-execute a really, really good defense and a sound team, that um, we'll be okay as long as we do that. Defense leads the nation in sacks right now, and they have a player who leads the nation individually in sacks. What have they been able to do to create havoc, and, and how big of a challenge is that for you guys to rein them in? Yeah, um, four four is a challenge. He's a good player. Uh, familiar with him when he was uh, at UNLV, and he's he's a good football player. Um, I think one of the things you got to look at immediately is is making sure that one guy doesn't beat you, and have some answers for that, and and make sure that we're ready to you know accommodate that and. You know, I think that one of the things they do a good job of is creating individual matchups. They have a couple big guys on the inside that, you know, 64 lets their linebackers run free and, and make plays. And so that's something that we got to make sure we're doing a good job of, you know, establishing that. And then we'll have to have good tackle play, honestly. Roger and, and Troy and, and potentially Jackson, our, our guys are going to have to have good football games uh, against those guys. Otherwise, you know, you let those guys get started early and, and it can be a problem. Guys that jumped out to me was uh, Denzel Boston. Um, you know, on the deep ball, uh, he had a run where he was physical, and even on the pass interference call, he was real physical on that. What are you seeing out of Denzel that's earning him playing time? Yeah, Denzel is a, a high effort, high motor guy that that has been able to you know take on a decent amount of the playbook early on as as a freshman, and uh, you know I think he. He cares a ton. Uh, he practices really, really hard, and, and he wants to get out there. So I think for him, he, he's got good burst. He's got great length as a receiver, and uh, he, he will compete for the football when it's in the air. He will sacrifice himself to go get it, and that's just kind of how he plays. He, he plays a really physical, fast style of football. Ryan, your offense has run up 1,100 yards and um, completed 15 out of 21 drives for scores. How does that match your goals? It's, it's pretty astounding, those numbers. Yeah, I think the part that's matched up, you know, we don't talk as much, believe it or not, about points and yards as we do efficiency and limiting negative plays. And that's been one of the things I've been really proud of is the first two weeks, um, not many turnovers and not many negative yardage plays. And I think when you can do that and you stay ahead of the sticks, it'll – it'll keep you in situations where you can go seven for 10 on third down and stay on the field. And if you can stay on the field and, and be really good on third down, I think you always have a chance to win the game. So for us, just moving forward, I think that's something that the guys, it's really registering with them. You know, even on the first drive, that was one of the first things I talked about when I watched film is 
we got in a third medium situation. We went to the first call on the call sheet in third medium and executed it to perfection and stayed on the field. And that's really what it comes down to is just out executing whoever you play. So I, I think that's been a that's been a really big part of our success. You look at the first two drives in the game. I think they were both ten play drives, and um, so it wasn't just all. You know, 84-yard touchdowns to Jalen. Some of them were chunking along and having to get the two-yarders and the four-yarders and, and, you know, work to get the big plays in between. For the offensive line, from the beginning, for them to do that quick start, even keel, and finish those drives early. You know, I thought they started faster this week, a lot faster. It's been a, a point of emphasis just to be able to come out and be ready to, you know, run block or pass protect right away. Consistent calls, you know, that's where I thought week one, we had, I had mentioned that I thought Corey played a good game and I thought he did a good job getting the table set for the O-line. I think that's a huge part of it is they come out, they get the right call, no miscommunication, no A-gap or B-gap problems, and and you're going to eliminate some of the negative yardage plays I was mentioning. And I thought that that's how, you know, they've been able to separate a little bit right now, just being able to operate and execute at a really high level. Coach DeBoer talked about you being in a rhythm with your play calling. How much of a rhythm were you in on Saturday? Yeah, it felt good. You know, the guys were, um, again, I hate to be boring for you guys, but when they, you got it kind of planned out in your head and they, you know, can execute your top calls on your on your call sheet and the things that, you know, I have confidence going into the game with and, you know, they're confident in it. it it's easy to stay in rhythm, I think. The challenges will be when you get to the games where, you know, defenses get you out of rhythm and getting back into that rhythm. So that's been one of the things that we've talked about is, you know, you want it to always feel like that, but know that there's going to be some times where, you know, they get you out. That's why I mentioned the one drive with Mike where, you know, you throw a pick, there isn't much more out of rhythm than throwing an interception or turning the ball over and boom, they come right back out and go down the field and, and get a field goal. So that was... You know, things like that stand out to me is our ability to maintain or get back into rhythm. You know, with his, when you're calling plays, if he can kind of anticipate what's coming next with you and how comfortable he is with that, and he says quite often he can. He says he's getting better at it, but uh, he says well, that's good. That's good. If I get sick, we'll just send him up there in between series. What's going on, with Rome? Is he good to go? He's good to go. It's good to go. He's out there yesterday running around. He looked great. He looked great. On Sundays, is it, is it pretty light? Uh, the guys? Yeah. Uh, yeah, they'll go out on the practice field. We'll get some individual in, um, catch the ball, pad snatch, run mesh, individual drills for all the position groups. We'll go through a blitz rec, um, correct and review all our plays from the game, and then we'll do a walkthrough intro on the next um, the next team. So those are the things we, we try to get out you know, right away on the field, and then we'll do some conditioning. All right. Let's bring on Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Correct. Indoors. Yeah. It could be cloudy, rainy out. So it's uh, old man LASIK from 25 years ago. I wonder how you would evaluate uh, the linebacker play, obviously rotating a lot of different guys through the first two weeks of the season. Yeah, I think it's been a blessing. We had an opportunity to literally play everybody in our two to three deep here in the first couple of weeks. Um, really excited about where Zoe Tupatal is at right now. Uh, two really consistent, strong performances, limited Emmys out of him, mental errors. And so really, really pleased with, with where he's at. Um, just running the show, being physical at the point of attack and then making the plays that come to him. So uh, excited about him. Uh, you know, I think Cam Bright's got off to a solid start. There's a couple of things we obviously need to clean up uh, on, but uh, he just keeps getting faster and faster as it goes. And I can see that his, um, you know, his thinking process is really starting to cut down. So that's been a benefit. And then, and then, like I said, we've been fortunate to play a lot of guys there through the first couple of weeks. And I think that just helps you build depth for later in the season. How would you assess your corner play? 
You know, it's been a little bit off and on right now. You know, obviously, I've had a number of guys that have had to go in there uh, and uh, take some snaps with, with where things have been at. Um, it's something that, you know, we've focused on here the last couple of weeks, uh, you know, cleaning up a few technical things with those guys. And, you know, the thing I know about that, that room, those guys are hyper competitive and, and they want to be successful on the field. And so they've been grinding to, to fix a few mistakes. Been back this weekend? That's the plan. Julius is done making that movie cornerback. Ju- Juice, yeah, he's great. Yeah, I love Juice. You know, I think you look at guys um, on the squad, and, and and you know, especially in this day and age where you ask, you know, uh, you know, just the mentality of like being selfless and doing whatever it is needed. And uh, you know, when we asked asked him to. You know, go ahead and transition. He said, Coach, you know, you put me wherever you need to put me. And I think that's it's fun to coach guys like that. I think Juice has got a great skill set. He's one of the fastest guys on the team, uh, has the ability to play man to man and uh, is hyper competitive and has a lot of experience. And so, you know, I think the, the transition for him to that position has been very smooth so far. Do you notice that he could possibly play? Because it sounds like fall, later in fall camp is when it's starting to do. Yeah, you know, we out of necessity, we you know pushed him out there. I think the biggest thing is, you know, like I said again, number one, he he can run. Uh, that's that's number one, and number two, you know, out of the out of the safety group when he was in that room, had had one of the better man to man skill sets, um, and then just great football IQ too to to boot. You know, just on top of that, where he's got really good strong football IQ and has a lot of experience, and so, you know, just a really veteran savvy move by him, allowing us to to move him into that role. Uh, Jordan is good to go, um, but with Elijah not suiting and then Devon Banks took a hit as well. Are you concerned about the depth at cornerback right now? Yeah, you know, I think I think I think in, in any day and age, you're always concerned about it, your depth. Um, but I think the number one thing is is that we've got guys that have been, you know, continually being competitive uh, out of that room, and so we've had an opportunity to play a number of different guys, and uh, we're going to bank on that experience coming up here into the meat of the season, where you know there's been some young guys that have gotten some run out there. Um, you know, JV on Green's been out there a little bit. I think it was a great run by him being out there on Saturday. And, and um, you know, we just got to count on, on you know, some playmaking ability out of guys that maybe haven't been on the field quite as much yet. And we gotta, we got to learn fast. Javion, is that a guy that you anticipate playing all year long or are you going to keep monitoring? Yeah, he'll play for us. Yeah, he'll play for us. You talked about guys being selfless. You've got the CTF uh, one time all Pac-12 guys rotating in now. How, how's, how's he doing there? Yeah, I think he's been solid. I mean, I think there's, you know, you look at going back to our first game, I think there's, we, you know, we left some opportunities on the field in our first game with those guys off the edge, just, you know, opportunities on the quarterback. And and now they've bounced back and been very competitive. And it's a nice one-two punch for us. And, you know, I think Zion fits in that role where there's there's a few plays out there that I'm sure he'd want to have over. But he's making big strides for us right now. and really proud of his, you know, competitive nature out there. And when you've got the combination of him and, and uh, Braylon Trice on the field, I mean, that's a pretty fearsome group to have coming off the edge. You know, Braylon had a had a great day for us Saturday. Uh, definitely an uptick from his first game, where you know he's a big time threat and coming off the edge. ZTF talked earlier in fall camp that he the rap on him is that maybe he's not as strong as a run, uh, a run game guy versus a pass rusher. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, I think everybody's got their strengths and their skill sets for sure. And, and, and you know, I think ZTF is no different. I think he is a, he's a very, very good pass rusher. I think he's gotten a lot better in the run game. And um, that's just kind of learning and working through the system and things we're having him do. Obviously, you guys can see we have him up standing on two feet on the edge and being able to read a few things out there. And he's made a lot of progress here on that in the last couple of weeks. So uh, overall-wise, I think it's uh, an area of improvement that he's focused on, and he's certainly making some progress. Where, where is MJ Alley at in terms of getting healthier? I know he played more last week than obviously did in the opener. Yeah, we feel good about him. You know, I think he's, you know, looking back at the, you know, really started to pop last week in practice uh, where his movements and his lateral agility uh, was showing up again. And, and, you know, then getting him an opportunity to get him some solid run in the game on Saturday. We got to play him a little bit the first week and then getting him some solid run. We're really confident in him coming up here that it's time for him to, you know, really be able to step into a larger role, take a little bit higher snap. Count. We were just being kind of cautious with it, you know, just coming back off the injury the first time. 
Well, S. Dean was the guy who got, got to play a little more this last week. What was kind of your, your assessment about how he looked? Yeah, I think he, did. he had a good, strong performance, and he's been in a little bit in the first two games. And, um, you know, it, we're asking him to now step into a number two position for us. And uh, super, super high football IQ, and he's a guy that's got great knack for being around the football. And um, I grade those guys that come in. I don't care what point you come into the game or if it's the first quarter, it's the fourth quarter, it's the end of the game, it's cleanup duty. You know, we grade those guys and hold those guys to the same high level of accountability, and, and he's graded out very well with, it, with his reps that he's had on the field so far. What about JV on Green? Just what's allowed him to see the field so early? Because he came in in the summer, wasn't it early? Yeah, yeah. confidence and co number one confidence. I think he's a really con you know a lot of times freshmen you don't you know you kind of question whether how confident they're going to be coming in. I think he's got a strong self identity and, and is very confident in himself. And then the second thing is is he's extremely coachable. Um, you know I think for a young guy to come in and learn the system as fast as he did and pick up all the nuances while still remaining competitive uh, is a big plus to him. And, and I think the upside for him is tremendous. Any, any of the young guys that you got in later in the game to jump out at you that you were surprised with? You got in guys at the end there. Yeah, well, we got an opportunity to kind of play a little bit of everybody. You know, it, it's just good. I, I think it's good for um, – you know those guys from a from a culture standpoint to get that competitiveness out there. Everybody wants to compete. Everybody, you know, we practice and everybody gets to practice, but not everybody gets to play in the games all the time. Um, you know, you just mentioned one. I thought Mikel came in, did some nice things for us. Um, Javion, which we talked about a little bit already, and then you got some some other young guys. Um, you know, or new guys, Sakai, uh, got a chance to get in the game later on, and he's definitely on a, a strong growth trajectory for us right now. Dan Himuli um, was in the game quite a bit there later on and did some good things. So, you know, all those things will pay dividends for us down the road. JV on is, is your only defensive freshman who, who won't redshirt? Uh, I mean, Tristan Dunn played uh, a little bit on Saturday on special teams, too. And so we're certainly, you know, we're growing him right now, but he's just flashing on special teams, which, you know, that's kind of from a secondary standpoint. That's how you start getting your first snaps on the field is be on the field on special teams and then grow from there. And we're certainly pressing on him right now to see, you know, to what level and what extent he's going to contribute this season. Look at the tape machine stages. What stands out? What kind of causes some problems? Balance, balance, and, and talent. I, I think they're extremely well balanced on both sides. You know, in, in terms of the run and the pass, um, they do equally uh, very well. Uh, they're very physical up front. Uh, they've got an explosive wide receiver that I think is you know as good as anybody out there can be. Anytime he touches the ball, I think he's got a chance to go the distance, whether it's on special teams or offense. I think you got a veteran savvy quarterback who's seen everything. Right, he's been through all the battles, um, and he's a really consistent producer for them and and they just don't you know consistently make big mistakes you know they're going to really work on grinding you um, and keeping you really well balanced in terms of the run of the pass it's hard to you know necessarily pin them down on certain situations they've got compliments to every phase or, or scheme that they run they've got compliments off of it all right all right thank you coach thanks guys Okay. Um, another week. Uh, we got that uh, kind of routine down, I think, as a team, uh, just that rhythm um, with a Sunday, you know, uh, doing a little workout and having our meetings and putting the game to bed. And then, uh, you know, today, um, time off for the guys. It's their day off. And uh, now they kind of know what a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday looks like. Uh, you know, Kent State, we had a few extra practices built in for that game plan. And uh, today or last week uh, was a normal week. So I think the guys uh, know what uh, is expected of them. And, you know, we're looking forward to a, a great opponent coming into uh, Husky Stadium this weekend. Uh, you know, love the challenge that it, it, uh, that's in front of us. And, you know, we're excited about the opportunity, ready to attack the week. Got questions? When you have a big game this weekend against a you know, number 11 team in the nation, do you approach it differently? Do you, do you bring that up or do is it just next game, next opponent, the way that you talk to your team? Yeah, I mean, the next game is the most important one. You know, the next it's the most important one in the season. And, um, you know, that's the way it is every single week. And that's the way you got to approach it. And, 
you know, the word of the week, and I think I shared this uh, maybe on Saturday night, um, you know, just uh, the word of the week last week was standard, you know, and there's a standard that you have to have that you, you know, whether it's your process of your weekly uh, preparation, um, you know, how you rehab, you know, how you hydrate yourself, um, your work ethic, you know, who you are as a person. I mean, just all of that. And that standard, can, you know, you set that. And, uh, you, you know, now that we know what that standard is, you know, we got to make sure we're always above the standard and, um, you know, the guys will be excited. So there should be great energy. There's no doubt about it. And, um, yesterday was, uh, you know, a, a great day for us. You could feel the, the energy and it comes because, uh, you got another win under your belt. You, you're playing well. Um, the guys are in, enjoying the, the process and what we're going through right now, but, uh, also know that, uh, you know, we got a, we got a great challenge and we got to keep improving, uh, for this weekend. So, um, you, do, you, you really don't want to make it too big, um, going into the week, but, um, uh, you know, obviously everyone understands that, uh, you know, we have a, a top 15 team coming into our place, uh, on Saturday. I'm sorry. Do you have any history with Mel Tucker? Uh, no, I do not. No. These programs haven't played in 25 years. And so typically there'd be a lot of, you know, looking at each other, not really knowing, you know, there's reputations involved, but you have about 10 people that, players and coaches that have played against Michigan State, including yourself. Does that help in any way? Did it take away any of the awe or, or any kind of uh, just image? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, that, um, I don't know, I'm not sure how many times I've played against them. Uh, it's been a few, you know, at a few different schools. And so um, just it's been it's obviously a whole different staff, you know, and, and how they're operating. I, I know is much different than how it was before. And, uh, you know, but you know that this is a program that uh, we're facing that's got a lot of pride and has high expectations just like we do. And, um, you know, it's a it's a. For us, it's a game that uh, is important to us. Um, it's also, you know, we represent the Pac-12, and uh, we want to put our best foot forward and show what, uh, you know, what our conference is all about. So um, it, it's big in, you know, more ways than just uh, just us. I never got a chance to coach, I think, against Bell, right? So obviously no crossover there when yep. you were a yep. man of it. How would you describe Michigan State football and just their style of play from when you did see them in the big game? Yeah, yeah, physical, tough. Um, you know, always uh, just playing with great defense. Uh, you know, um, you know, you, you get used to playing in weather. You know, lived in Michigan for three years there, and you know, so at Eastern Michigan, same thing. You know, you, you're playing in weather, and in November it's gonna be cold, and so you got to build your program around you know that style that can endure those games uh, and the weather that comes with it. So. Um, I think, you know, that's the style that you see on film right now with them. It's uh, it's physical, um, trying to establish that run and and uh, protecting their quarterback and um, a defense that's flying around and and doing the same thing up front. You know, they I know their defensive coordinator pretty well faced him many times over the years, probably probably seven, eight times, I'm guessing, or, or close to it. And uh you know, um, just uh, they'll, they'll be ready to play and they'll come and attack you. And and that physicality will show up, uh, you know, on both sides of the ball and everything they do. What do you think of Peyton Thorne? Yeah, I mean, he, he's slinging it around, doing a great job executing. And you can see he's uh, he's responsible for making checks on the field for them. Um, you know, um, you know, with the run game, pass game, um, seems like he's got uh, just a really good feel um, and command of uh, the offense for sure. Caitlin, you and you and Michael had a pretty memorable game at Michigan State back in, in 2019. Mm -hmm. Do you, anything stand out from that game, and is there anything you take from that experience? Um, that can help us yeah, uh, yeah. No, again, um, different coaching staff that we'll be facing, but um, I mean, just you know, that's one of those games that you know Mike was just on. I think it was 20 completions, consecutive completions he had in that game, um, if I remember right, and uh, made some big throws and came down to the wire and I know we scored and then they they ended up scoring with maybe f f kicking a field goal with five seconds to go or uh, the last one of the last plays of the game I think we uh, we tried our razzle dazzle play at the end and gave up a, a ball going the other way but uh, you know it, it said a lot about Mike and uh, man we were very confident with what uh, you know we could be uh, with him at quarterback and uh, you know that same thing's going to be the case here um, you know he he 
he's not going to be in awe. He's played in many of these games, you know, and so you're comforted having one of your team leaders and, and your quarterback in particular being a guy that uh, has played in, in big games and um, understands, uh, you know, even the color of jerseys that are across from him, right? I mean, it's nothing new to him. Which one do you think right now, after two games, your biggest strength is as a team overall? Um, I th- you know, uh, consistency. You know, I think we're we're consistent. It doesn't mean we're at the consistent at the level we want to be at yet, but um, I just know when we come out to practice every day what we're going to get. Um, I, I know that uh, there's a lot of care and want to, and um, that every day we're going to keep getting better. Um, when it comes to the play on the field, um, you know, I think we've we've consistently um, been. If I heard Coach Grubb talk about you know the word be, word be efficient offensively, and um, you know I think uh, defensively there's been times where we've given up some yards um, and uh, had our backs to the wall. Um, but you know a sudden change at the end of the first half and we we dig in and uh, against Kent State you know some times where they were in our red zone and again forcing some field goals um, that happened again on Saturday. So I think there's a I think there's a, you know, the, the mindset and people are probably sick of me saying it, but I really feel our team's starting to believe in it. It's uh, that no matter what, is, what has happened and where we're at, that moment's the most important moment. And just like this is going to be the most important game until we get to the next one. And uh, they just uh, really hone in and I think are able to focus and not be overwhelmed with any situations and uh, be their best and uh, trust the guy next to him to do their job. And I think there's that's a lot, but I think that's the direction we're headed. And I think some of the things that have happened have helped us believe in that philosophy and belief in that mindset. Washington hasn't beaten a ranked power five team at home in 20 years. Michigan, 0-1. I didn't need to know that. I wasn't aware of that. Well, does that <laughs> what, what would this mean for you in the program? Yeah, it'd be huge. Um, no question. I mean, it just especially with where we're at in the process of of coming back and building. And um, I like where we're at after two games. But, um, you know, this is a different animal. You know, we're talking about a, a top-ranked team. And so um, it would mean a lot to us. There's no, there's no doubt about it. You had differences in special teams in terms of a different guy kicking off and Grady, and then it seemed like you were using two different holders at times during the game. What, were, what was the thought process there, and what did you feel like you got out of the Yeah, I think uh, the, with the kickoffs, um, we just – and, and we still didn't see exactly what Grady can do. I've seen Grady in practice um, booting the ball, you know, seven, eight yards deep in the end zone. And I think just that first game, maybe jitters and just things like that um, – you know, working through that. And he, I just told him, I said, go out there and cut it loose, you know, after the first couple. And I think he got better even as the game went on, um, you know, got those touchbacks that help our return team. Um, he, he actually has the ability to have great hang time. And uh, so giving him a chance to do that, I think uh, even over the course of a long season, uh, I've, I've felt this way for many years is that, you know, if you can take some uh, some of those kicks off of the leg of your even your your uh, your 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 place kicker, um, you know, that's that's going to help him uh, when he needs to have a little more juice uh, when he has the longer field goals. Um, we just wanted to mix things up. Um, if, you know, there was some things that we have uh, available to us with, uh, you know, you talked about Dylan being in there as a holder um, for a few. And so there's just some things that we're continuing to install and incorporate into our special teams play um, short term and long term and uh, just changing that up. So you'll continue to see maybe a little bit of variation of both he and Jack holding, uh, you know, in the future. The running back room is developing. Well, it's getting more competitive and more competitive every week, you know, and and uh, we need those guys. Uh, you know, I, I, I think, um, you know, they've all had their moments um, and they've all done a really nice job. And I think there's uh, definitely things they need to improve on. Um, um, but, uh, you know, they their involvement in special teams, I think, is going to be critical as we continue through the next few weeks. Um, you know, and that's what's nice. To, it, nice is that uh, we're getting healthier at that position, um, getting more guys back. And, you know, that competition is going to lead to, uh, you know, um, to me in the, in the week of practice, um, you know, just better, being better and better and better at that spot. Um, and so, you know, Coach Grubb talked about, you know, who's preparing hardest. Uh, well, they're all going to be preparing pretty hard because I think they all want to step on the field this Saturday. Some, uh, you've got a chance to play some of your first-year guys. Are there some of the first-year guys that we can anticipate playing more than the four games? 
Yeah, I think as the season goes on, you know, and again, there's guys coming back to us right now where, you know, um, there's some DBs, I think, that, uh, you know, Javion played uh, some, um, you know, snaps uh, this last week and a guy like Tristan Dunn, you know, um, we need those guys. I keep bringing up special teams, but it's because the snaps are so important. But um, just taking that uh, th- those hits and those plays off of some of our older guys. Um, but then you got the right the the changing and the evolution of the running backs coming back. So week to week, I think it's a fluid thing. Um, you know, we'd love to save the red shirts, but if we need them to play to go out and get a win, and you know we're going to do that. And uh, you know those opportunities that they had, like a, a Denzel going out there. You know, um, it shows us uh, you know how how he can operate when the lights are on. You know, and uh, he builds some confidence and some uh, some consistency. Um, there's some things he did well. There's some things that, uh, you know, showed up that led to a little bit of our, uh, you know, maybe not being quite in rhythm as an offense, you know, early in the game, the first couple plays. Is that part of the, the calculus with Grady Gross also that he's a freshman and you might want to manage his red shirt or, or yeah. would you cut him loose? Definitely going in after into the first game, that was the thought process. And now, again, we'll just keep working through it. If he can have a, you know, have some, uh, ha- you know, show out really well here. You know, maybe you just uh, pull the red shirt and, uh, you know, you have him be your your kickoff guy. And, uh, you know, you need a number two kicker as well, you know, on the road and travel. I mean, for all games, I guess. So, um, you know, we'll just play that by ear, kind of keep it fluid with him too. Yeah, boy, Peyton's kickoffs, do you want those kind of short to try to pin the opponent or would you rather have him just boot those out of it? Yeah, I think the biggest thing with our kickoffs, and we will change up where we want that ball kicked to, um, you know, from sideline to sideline, and that's the part that we're probably not where we we want to be. Um, the distance, I mean, yeah, I mean, if we put it in the end zone and it's a touchback, I mean, we're good with that. So kick it deep and let it fly and get some hang time on it so that way uh, if it doesn't get to the end zone, the wind catches it, whatever it might be. Um, or they bring it out. Um, we want our kickoff team as far down the field before they catch the ball that we possibly can. But uh, I think that just the directions, and we mix it up, but uh, we haven't seen the execution of those kicks where we want them yet. Is that going to be a bigger point of emphasis this week? you got one of the better returners in college football coming in this week. Um, you know, finalist for one of the most versatile players in college football in general. Um, is that going to be, you know, you talked about the young guys talk, uh, playing on special teams. Is that going to be a bigger point of emphasis and something where you kind of go back and evaluate some of those guys, redshirting or not, based mm-hmm. on how they perform against a talented player like that? Yeah, it's been a big point of emphasis um, from, you know, after the first game and it was a big point of emphasis yesterday in meetings that we just got to, I mean, it was better and our coverage was better. Um, but it, it needs to just be it needs to be great. You know, um, that field position on a kickoff that, you know, we're in control of. Uh, we know where that ball is being kicked off pretty much every time, you know, and we can dictate where that ball is going to be kicked to, you know. And so we should know and, um, you know, we should build those uh, those those schemes and our guys as they get the more and more reps. They should uh, they should be pretty locked into what their responsibilities are see quite as much of Taj Davis last week. Uh, you played some late, but was that a little bit of a health thing, or was it situational? How, how you yeah, no, it was more situational, and I think um, Giles got the hot hand, and um, the rotation we had, and the personnel groupings um, that Coach Grubb went to, um, you know, there's multiple ways. It can be just be a sub that uh, Coach Shep maybe is uh, subbing a guy in for uh, on, on at a certain time. Guy needs a, a blow, you know, needs a little uh, little win there. But um, you know, then some of it's uh, Coach Grubb just calling in certain personnel groupings. And so, um, you know, there's Taj has been doing a great job. Uh, we need him ready to go, and and um, he'll, he'll he'll be ready uh, to go out there and make the big plays like he did uh, week one. When you, when you opened with uh, two opponents that you were going to be favored over, heavily favored, and, and and you took care of business, I think the way you expected to. Now you it's you got to maybe change the whole outlook. You're not coming in favored. Mm-hmm. Do you have to kind of keep these guys from getting way too amped up because the competition is so much better? Well, I I, I mean. Yeah, I mean, I hope I hope they have that energy. You know, I, I think thus the the, fo- the week of practice is always going to lead into what that mindset looks like on Saturday. You know, and if you really prepare prepare well, um, you're going to be confident. When you talk about the energy and and being overexcited, I don't know. 
too many times if I've seen that happen. I think it's good to have these two games to kind of, you know, um, get that, those first game jitters uh, out of pretty much most of the guys uh, and get them behind us. But, uh, you know, I think uh, that's our coach's job and my job all week long is to just get them in the right mindset. And, you know, I hope we're fired up. I mean, there should be a little bit of, you know, every game, there should be a little bit of like a, a tickle in your belly, right? I mean, then, you know, you want to be a little nervous. That means it means something. It, uh, it's important. And so uh, I know that's going to be the case this weekend for some guys. But, uh, you know, we do just want to make sure we understand, embrace the moment, you know, be excited about the great opportunity. Um, you know, control what you can control and, uh, you know, give everything you got and live with the results. That's the way we approach it every day. Do you ultimately want to get to a point where you're consistently rotating a couple of backs? Or can you still go situational with Newton, Cam, Wayne, Newton, Nixon? I mean, does that, do you want to kind of get away from that at some point to kind of streamline that? Yeah, I mean, I think. Um, I, Coach uh, Marks has actually done a pretty good job, and it's only going to get more difficult, I think, is what you're alluding to. Um, but he's done a pretty good job of rotating so far. And, uh, um, again, you don't want to get into it, and I don't think we are right now, into a tendency situation where a certain guy comes in and we do certain things. I definitely – and there's enough versatility within the group to where I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but uh, Coach Marks, you know – uh, it, it becomes a tougher task to, to make sure you got uh, the right guys on the field and uh, you know um, you know you, you can overanalyze it and and uh, and I don't think that's the case uh, that that will happen but um, you know I think it gets harder and harder as we get five and six guys now that are ready to go but that's a good problem. Coach Jeremy Bernard was a guy who committed to Washington a long time ago and you know you, there was a change in staff and mm-hmm. he decided to go to Michigan State. He's already making plays there. Anything on the backstory on that or anything you can tell us about that one? No, just other than he's a great kid and it was a it was a crazy time that uh, that he was going through, you know. Um, he was an early enrollee and um, I mean, uh, I'm going to wish him nothing but the best uh, except for this week, right? But uh, um, he's a great kid. He's a great football player and um, I really enjoyed getting to know him and um, you know, he's already made, like you said, made some plays for them. Uh, but uh, there was a lot going on, right? I mean, coaching staff changes, not just with uh, myself, but, you know, position coach changes and so forth. And, uh, you know, he was trying to figure out uh, where to go, and it was in a short amount of time, and it was all happening really fast. What allows Giles to play so many different positions? Giles? Uh, yeah, what allows him to be so yeah, he's just got a great, um, you know, we, we really worked with him in the slot a lot um, to start out camp. Um, but, you know, with Jalen playing a lot in the slot, we didn't want him to just be right there and only get a few snaps. And so he's uh, really taken it on to be versatile and know the whole offense. And he's just a well-rounded receiver and, uh, you know, brings great energy um, to the to the unit, to our team. And uh, it was fun seeing him get out there and have a really big day. Been some some grumbling a little bit over the the attendance on Saturday. Aside from playing really well and, and winning a bunch of games, are there things as a head coach you try to do to maybe foster that connection with the fan base to to encourage people to come out? Do you, do you see that as kind of being part of your role? Yeah, I, I, it is. It definitely is. Um, I think uh, first and foremost, we got to do our part, right? We got to do our part as a team to make it exciting, to make it uh, fun to come out on Saturdays and, and watch us play. And uh, we're working hard to do that. I think the other thing is, is, uh, you know, just trying to show, you know, more about who our guys are and realize that, man, these are some these are some special, not just players, but people that you want to root for and uh, are fun to watch. And, and they have a fun time playing and they're they're we're building into a team. Um, um, there's not a lot of me first guys anymore on this football team and uh, be hard to find far hard to find them. And, uh, you know. I'm just going to, you know, the other part of it is, is the stadium when it's rocking. Um, again, I've, I've said I've been on the wrong sideline and know what that's like. Just trying to get a snap off, you know, and how loud it can be and how much of a problem that is when you're an opposing offense in this stadium. 
um, trying to execute. Everything is just so much harder when it's allowed. You know, quarterback trying to change a protection, you know, trying to even just uh, get the signals or the calls in from the sideline. Everything's just a lot harder. And so, uh, you know, I'm just, you know, we need Husky Nation out here in a big way on Saturday. Um, you know, I think, you know, we've been trying to prove that we're going to be fun to watch and be fun to to be there uh, at the stadium for to, to support. And uh, we appreciate everyone who's been at our games. And, uh, you know, it's been a fun environment, but I know there's still a lot more that we can have. We have the uh, we have the motto. No limits is our motto for this season for our team. I guess the limit would be capacity, right? So, but uh, I would just challenge the fan base, uh, Husky Nation, that, uh, you know, let's not have any limits to what this can be this season. You know, let's not sit and wait around to see what can happen. Let's, uh, let's put the pedal down and let's go get this. How do you feel about scheduling? Some people say they got to have, say, the Big Sky teams and MAC teams come in just to kind of keep the schedule sane, I think. Mm-hmm. Others, uh, maybe Notre Dame and that wasn't the case last weekend yeah. with Notre Dame. But, um, you know, Washington one time opened with Ohio State, Michigan State, and Michigan, and then went 0 for 3 in those games. But how do you feel about that? Do you think you should have, say, the other tiers coming in just to keep your schedule kind of uh, manageable, I think? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a balance, right? And um, I, I think I mentioned one thing on a kind of completely in a different direction. I think just for college football in general and having been at the different levels for those programs to operate, it's important for them to have games. And I guess as a advocate for just college football, um, it's not necessarily expressing why I think it's important for us to, to play or what our schedule should look like. But those teams need those games as well. You know, Portland State to make their program go. And it's healthy for college football. From a standpoint of from our end, um, you know, w- with being a first-year staff and trying to build our program, having some games that, um, you know, aren't all three boom, 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 you know, and uh, I mean, it helps us get into a rhythm, helps us gain some confidence. Um, but, you know, there there are, you know, going to be seasons, I think, coming up where looking at the schedule where it is more difficult and more challenging. And, uh, you know, that's that's uh, that's something we're all for. You know, we want to compete um, at the highest level. Um, and, uh, you know, our fans want to see great games. And so, uh, you know, we want to f- we want to find that fine line on being able to build our team each and every year um, while also making it entertaining for the fan base. It was warm out on Saturday. Expecting a chance of rain on sun, um, this coming Saturday. Have you figured out if weather's going to be an advantage for what you do yet? Um, I know we talk about it quite a bit. Um, you know, that's where just weekly we got to keep stressing run game, defense. You know, those things. Uh, just from where I've been my entire career, um, people always talk about being an offensive guy, and it's the offense this, offense that. Um, if you really look back, we won championships because of having a great defense, an offense that can control the football when it needs to, can score points, get leads, put def- put the other team in tough positions to where they become one-dimensional. And then, you know, um, been a part of uh, three national champions and a conference championship, and there's been special teams plays for touchdowns and, you know, block kicks and big field goals. And uh, those have been ones that uh, have pretty much won the game, you know, those games and those championship moments. So um, offense uh, is, uh, you know, obviously – kind of what I've been always kind of labeled as as far as a coach. But, uh, man, we're going to win football games because of those other those other areas, uh, you know, standing out as well. Do you happen to watch the Oregon State, Fresno State game on, on Saturday night? Yeah, I had a chance to watch it. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Like going for the win there in that, that type of situation? I think every coach has his ways. You know, you, you you can go back and forth, right? If you if you get it, you it looks great. If you don't, you know, you wonder what if. So I think it's all about every game being uh, different on who you're playing and and whether you're in that spot and what 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 the game is, the game flow has been all about offensively, defensively. You would probably know what to do with Coletto if when you play Oregon State if you're in that situation. Yeah, I was paying attention to know what they were, what might be coming down the road. For sure. All right. Thanks, All right thank you. Yep. Thanks, Coach.